So, in the earlier lectures we have seen various numerical data types that are supported by Python and in this lecture we will see what sequence data types are and what are the various sequence data types that are supported by Python. These are all the data types that are supported by Python and we have already seen the details of the scalar data types especially the numeric data types like integer, float and the complex data types and in this video we will see the sequence data types that are supported by python that is list, tuple and string. So, now let us try to understand what sequence data types are. So, sequence data is ordered collection of elements that is instead of storing the so in either integer or float or complex so we could store only a single value but in case if I want to store a collection of elements so how can I store that say for example I want to store marks of 1000 students. So, if we have only the scalar data types then we need to declare 1000 different uh, variables and then you need to store the 1000 different marks in 1000 variables and it will be very difficult for us to keep track of the 1000 variables right. Instead of doing that what we can do is we can use a collection data types where you can store the collection of elements as a single variable and python supports that with the help of the sequence data types like list tuple and the string and these sequence data types allows us to store collection of values that is multiple values in an organized and the efficient manner. So, you can store retrieve and you can perform the operations more efficiently. So, now let us see the details of each of these sequence types. So, now let us see the details of an interesting sequence data type that is string class. So, a string is actually a collection of one or more characters where the ordering among the characters is preserved in case of the string data type. So, unlike the other languages python do not provide any separate data type to store a single character. Even if you store a single character it is treated as a string only in case of python. Python strings can be enclosed either by using the single quotes or the double quotes or even the triple quotes. So, python strings belongs to the str class the class str. So, now let us see how we can create the strings. So, here I am creating a variable s1 as a string by storing the string python and here if you observe I am enclosing the string in single quotes. Moreover, you can even use the double quotes to enclose the string. So, here s2 is again the string. So, s3 is a string which is enclosed in triple quotes. So, you can use the triple quotes to represent a string which falls into multiple lines that is lengthy strings can be represented by enclosing them in triple quotes. So, S4 is a string. So, here S1, S2, S3, S4 all these variables are treated as strings because you are storing a string type of data in these variables. Now, let us see how we can access the string elements. So, consider this example string S1 which contains the string hello world. So, here after seeing the content of the variable S1, so we can understand that it is a string class and whenever you want to access the entire string you can use the name of the string itself that is whenever I say S1 then I am referring to the entire string that is hello world. But how can I access any specific content of the string say for example I want to access the second character from the string or the last character from the string is it possible for me to access the specific character or a portion of the string. So, it is valid in python you can access the specific character or substring by using the indexing operation. So, this is the general form you can use to access either a single character or a substring from the given string. So, you have to use a string name followed by the index value enclosed in the square braces. Let us see the details about the indexing. So, string indexing whenever you are using the indexing it should be of the integer type. So, real type of indexing is not valid in python both negative indexing and positive indexing are valid in case of python. Say for example, consider the string s1 which is having the string hello world where the indexing starts with 0 and ends with the string length minus 1. So, here the length of the string is 11 that is how the last character can be referred with the index 10. So, 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth 10 in this case. So, negative indexing also is valid in case of 
Python, where the last character of the string can be accessed by using minus 1 as the index, whereas the first character of the string can be accessed by using minus the length of the string. Here, the length of the string is 11, so we can use the minus 11 to access the first character. That's how we can use both positive indexing and the negative indexing to access any specific character from the string. Say for example, I can use S1 of 0 to access the first character that is H. I can use S1 of 4 to access the character at the index 4. Remember, you are not accessing the fourth character, instead you are accessing the character at the index 4. And when I say S1 of minus 2, you are accessing using the negative indexing and you are accessing the character at the negative index minus 2, that is L. You are even allowed to access a substring by using the slicing operator, that is a colon operator. So, 2 colon 7. Here, you are accessing the characters from the index 2 to the index 6. So, here 7 is exclusive, that is how you are accessing the characters from the index 2 to 7 minus 1, that is 6. Here in this case, you are accessing the characters from the index 2 to the index 7 minus 1 and every character you are accessing. So, instead of accessing every character, you are even allowed to access the characters with a step counter. Here you can use the last uh, example to access the characters within the indices 2 and 9 with an incrementation of 2. That is, you are accessing the characters at 2, 4, 6, so on and so forth till 8 as the index 10 is not included. So, now consider what are the values that are returned by each of these string accessing. So, S1 of 0, it returns the first character from your string that is H. Then S1 of 4, so you are accessing the character at the index 4 that is O you are accessing. When I say S1 of minus 2, so you are accessing the character from the negative index minus 2 that is L. So, when you are using the slicing operator 2 to 7, you are actually accessing the characters from the index 2 to index 6. So, 2 to 6 is L, L, O space W, all the characters you are accessing. So, wherever you are using the slicing operator along with the step counter, so because your step counter is 2, so you are accessing every alternate character within the range of 2 to 9. So, as a result, you are getting L, O, W, R as a result of the last statement. That's how you can access a character by passing either the positive index or by passing the negative index along with the string name. You are even allowed to access a substring by using the slicing operator that is a colon operator. The string data type is supported by most of the programming languages like C, C++, Java, even the other languages also support the string data type. But in addition to that, Python supports a rich collection of data types like list, tuple, dictionary, all the other things. Now, let's see the details of the list sequence data type. List is actually an ordered collection of objects of either the same type or the different types. You just enclose the collection of elements within the square brackets by separating each element with a comma. So, you need to remember one thing about lists, lists are mutable. So, in other video, we will see what the mutability and immutability of the data types is. Here, L3 is a list where you are storing a collection of elements. So, instead of storing a single element here, you are storing collection of elements that is 10, 20, 30 and 40 and you are packing these elements together and you are storing in a single variable that is L3. Here in this case, you are storing all the elements of the same type. So, moreover in the list you are allowed to store elements or of different types also. So, consider this example L4 where I am storing a string, an integer, a floating point number, again another string and another floating point number. So, that is how you can store collection of elements in the list. So, now let us see how do we access the elements from the list. When you want to 
access the entire list. Say for example here I have L1 with the elements 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 and 70. So in this case if you want to access the entire list then you just use its name. When I refer L1 that means that I am accessing the entire collection of elements that are stored in L1. You can use the indexing operator just like how you did in case of the strings. So indexing in case of the strings, lists and tuples it's all the same. So even the slicing operator can also be used in the same way. So here if you want to access a single item from the list you can use the indexing operator by passing an integer index. So list also uses the integer indexing starting from the 0 as the first index and the length of the list minus 1 as the last index. So L1 of 0 that is you are retrieving the first element from your list. You can even you are allowed to access a portion of the list also by using the slicing operator just how you did in case of the strings. Say for example 4 colon 8 colon 2. In this case I am accessing the elements from the index 4 to the index 8 minus 1 that is 7 and every alternate number in that portion from the list L1. So that's what the meaning of this statement L1 of 4 colon 8 colon 2. So that's how you can access a portion of the list by using the slicing operator. Now let's see another immutable sequence data type that is supported by Python that is tuple. So tuple is also an ordered collection of objects where you can store either the elements of the same type or the different types. So if you are using the same types then that means you are using the homogeneous types of elements. When you are using the different types that means you are storing the heterogeneous types of elements in case of the tuples. Similar to the list, tuples also allow you to store collection of either the same types of elements or the different types of elements. But the difference between list and tuple is lists are mutable whereas tuples are immutable. That means you are not allowed to change the values of tuple once you create the tuple. So that's the difference between list and tuple. Other than that, lists and tuples are the same. So now consider this example tuple. So where T1 is created with a collection of integer elements 9, 2, 13 and 24. So where all the elements of this tuple are belonging to the integer type. So now I am creating another tuple T2 with the heterogeneous types of elements. So it has a set of strings, it has a set of integers, moreover it has a floating point number also. Now let us see how we can access the tuples. So accessing of tuples is the same as how we did in case of the list. So remember while creating the tuple you are enclosing the collection of elements in the parenthesis whereas while creation of the list we are enclosing the collection of elements in the square braces. So here T1 is a tuple which is having the elements from 10, 20, 30, 40 so on and so forth up to 70. Remember the elements are enclosed in the parenthesis not in the square brackets to represent that T1 is a tuple. So now if I want to access the entire tuple then I can use its name itself. So by referring its name so I mean that I am accessing the entire tuple that is all the elements of the tuple you are accessing. So instead of that you can even access a single element by using the indexing and the indexing all is all the same as how you did in case of the strings or the lists. Moreover you are allowed to access a portion of the tuple also by using the slicing operator like this. So T1 of 0 that means you are accessing the first element from your tuple. T1 of 2 colon 6 colon 2 that means you are accessing the elements from the index 2 to the index 6 minus 1 and every alternate value. That's how you can use the tuple which is a sequence type moreover which is the immutable type. So far in this lecture we have seen briefly what are the various sequence data types that are supported by Python. So we have seen what strings are and how do we access them, then what lists are, how do we access them, how to create them, moreover how what tuples are. So how do we access them, how to create them, so that's what we have seen in this video. The sequence data types are very interesting and very useful that are supported by Python and we'll see in depth about these sequence data types in the second module of this Python programming specialization. Thank you, thank you for watching this video.